Welcome. Thank you for joining us on the web. Of course, we're getting very excited about the Pennsylvania Conference for Women coming up on October 6th at the Pennsylvania Conference Center downtown and 6ABC, of course, a broadcast sponsor. Very excited to be involved with it. And as part of that, I'm spending some time this morning with Courtney Smith Goodrich, who is here from JP Morgan Chase. She is the COO of Global Tech. I've been learning what that means. It is a huge job. We're glad you took some time to come our way for a moment. And I know you'll be giving a presentation. What will you be talking about? So I'll be talking a bit about uh, a lot of issues facing women around work-life balance, but also an aspect of personal branding, which is so important as women actually grow their careers and develop themselves and their own brand within the workplace. You know, a lot of people hear that word and they don't know what it means. Let's talk about it in the context of some things you wanted to bring up. Your best tips and strategies. If I'm an office worker and I'm not even thinking about branding, what is your best tip and strategy for doing it? Well, it's interesting. We talk about branding and it's about who you are and, and what people know you for. And I think first and foremost, people think a bit more about, you know, where do they want to go next with their career? And one of the first things I tell people when they come to me with that is, let's talk first about making sure you're doing your current job and doing it really well. Because people oftentimes get very focused around what they're going to next and they forget about how you get that next opportunity is do the current job you're doing with passion, with initiative, and with excellence. And that will bring those other opportunities. And I think second to that is, you know, oftentimes for women especially, we run the risk of assuming that everybody knows we're doing a great job and they'll just give us the next opportunity. And there's two aspects to that that really can help. One is tell people you're doing a great job. And it seems a little unnatural, but it's really important to do a bit of self-promotion to say, hey, I'm doing a great job, here's what I'm doing. And then the last thing is ask. Like a lot of times there's a lot of people that think I will get that opportunity with, and people will know I want it. And they m make the mistake of not actually asking for it first. It was interesting, um, I was coaching actually a male in this case about he was upset that he didn't get a promotion. It's his second year, he didn't get the promotion. And finally I asked, I said, did you tell your manager you wanted the promotion? And he stopped and he paused and he said, no, I didn't. And I said, well, you know, that's the first step is you actually have to ask and say, this is my career goal. This is what I want to do next. So I think a combination of focus and do, doing well what you currently do, making sure people are aware that you're doing a great job, and then also asking and stating, this is my next career objective. You manage a lot of people, and I would imagine a lot of those people are women, and you probably are able to break out things that you see that tend to be a strength for women and things that tend to be weaknesses for women. What would you say? I think the first one is, is what I just mentioned around asking, right? There's a fair amount of just the assumption of people will see I'm doing a great job and they'll automatically give me that opportunity. And you really have to have a very open dialogue with your management team around this, these are what my career objectives are and can you help me get there? And having that open dialogue and putting yourself out there and asking for things is really important. So I think that's the first one. And the second one I think we often do as women is certainly we, we want to make sure we exceed and we finish what we're doing before we sometimes move on to the next opportunity. And a lot of times that's, it, it's great that you want to have that commitment to your team, to your objectives, but if you get offered that next great opportunity, take it. And don't, if things will still happen when you're gone, but make sure you're, you're looking out for yourself as well. A lot of women in the room at the conference will be looking for mentors, you know, somebody to help them along over the long trajectory, but they have no idea about sponsors and that they often are not the same people. What's the difference and how do you get them? So a mentor is somebody, absolutely, but I'm a big, huge fan of mentorships. I have several. Some of them know they're my mentors and some of them don't, so sometimes it's a little bit unofficial too. But mentors are the folks that you can confide in, you've got an issue, they're trusted advisors to your career and any issues that you're having. Um, sponsors can be people that are your mentors, but sponsors take on a different role, and that role is really focused around what is your next career objective, and how can they specifically help you get there. So how can they be a voice in the room when you may be discussed for being, for being promoted? They can be somebody who has a direct influence on that next job that you're going after. But So sponsorship takes on a different role in that it's specific to getting you to that next level of your career, be it a promotion or another job. Mentors in a similar capacity, but much more casual. Sponsors have a very specific goal in mind. And how do you get the sponsor? Because pretty much you're, that's a different ask. It's not like, let's just have coffee and give me your thoughts. It's, will you please put me on your list to bring up my name when I'm not in the room? Like, how do you make it clear what you want from them? Exactly what you just described. So in some cases in our organization, when there is a big promotion involved, we will actually help orchestrate that so that people have sponsors they can go to with that specific goal in mind. 
Oftentimes, though, it's very much the, I would like this goal, so coming back to the ask, and I need people around me to help voice for me at the table, and so I will go and ask. So I encourage people when they're up for a promotion and they want it, get their sponsors in line, talk to them, ask them, and don't be afraid to ask them. There's, there's only two answers they can give you. No is even not so bad, right? But the yes is even better. Better to know. Exactly. Um, you are a working mom, working wife. What's your, a lot of women in that room will wonder, how do they lean in when they're about to fall over? What do you tell them? I think the first and foremost is you have to cut yourself a break sometimes, right? We, we often want to do everything, and then the minute something doesn't go right at home or at work, we feel like we've failed. And the reality is it's a constant thing that you just have to give yourself a break, know it's not going to be perfect, and do your best. Um, and then the second thing is just re recognize throughout your life your priorities will change, and don't be afraid to prioritize, reprioritize things along the way. Um, and I tell this story, and it's called my like, green carpet story, which um, hopefully is getting, not getting too stale. But So my, I have a 15-year-old daughter. When, before she was born, we had a house with a dark green carpet and a light tan dog and a white cat. And so every day I'd come home from work and the cat hair and the dog hair would drive me crazy and I would vacuum the whole house because it was a mess. Then I had my daughter and I realized the 20 minutes it was taking me to vacuum the carpet was 20 minutes I could be spending more with my child. And so I basically said, forget the carpet, threw down a blanket and spent time with my child. And that's little things like that around reprioritizing. The house doesn't matter as much as spending time with my daughter. And then, so by the way, if you come to my house, bring a lint brush. <laughs> but most, more, most importantly, that's time I wanted to spend with my daughter and not worrying so much about the house. And I've had to do that, and every one of us has to do that on almost a daily basis of what's most important that day. So don't be afraid to cut yourself some slack, but also reprioritize along the way and realize some things that are important today won't be as important tomorrow and let them go. All right, Courtney Smith Goodrich from J.P. Morgan Chase, thank you for spending time with us. We hope you're getting excited about the Pennsylvania Conference for Women on October 6th at the Pennsylvania Conference Center. We'll see you there.